This is not a university. It's a prison. And these men are learning how to code. Give them tools, give them support, they will not reoffend. But it's going to change the dynamic of families across the country. We went behind the walls of one of our country's oldest and most infamous prisons to check out a program that's transforming the lives of their students. On average, 50% of incarcerated people in California reoffend after their release. But not a single graduate of this program has returned to prison. Students are coming back to society, and they're also getting offered jobs in successful tech companies. The Last Mile is flipping the script on what's possible for their students when given an opportunity. I look at my life, and every time I was disrupted, I always got punished. But here it is, tech, disruption is celebrated, and they call it innovation. My name is Jason Jones. I spent about 13 and a half years in prison. I was getting write-ups, being very disruptive in the facility. From some advice, I got introduced to The Last Mile. It drastically changed my life, drastically. Now I'm the lead remote instructor at The Last Mile. How many people know what coding was before getting there? That's real. How many people think this is like a definite job opportunity when you get out? Yes, sure. I like that. I want y'all to know, like, y'all got support. Coding is hard. Work in teams, work together. Your biggest resource, and I tell this to every class, is the people in here. In 2010, prior to starting the last mile, I committed to do about 30 minutes inside San Quentin and speak to a group of men about business and entrepreneurship. I thought I'd talk to them, I'd get a bunch of blank stares, and I'd leave. And what happened was, this became one of the most engaged conversations I've ever had. These guys were prepared, they were interested, they had a lot of desire. Some guys had business plans that they'd been sitting on for years, and they finally had someone to show them. Before I started this, I had similar opinions that it was an easy remedy to just lock them up. And we talk a lot about second chances, but many people in prison basically didn't have a first chance. And to be honest with you, Silicon Valley is probably the ideal place for us to start this, because Silicon Valley is all about failure, dusting yourself off, starting over again. It challenged me on so many different levels, but it was hard. Like, I struggled with reading stuff at that time, but the way I learned it was like, I used to have a facilitator print out blocks of code for me, and I'll just write down in English what I think is going on, and I'll go test it. The people in the program, this is their full-time job, so they're in the lab at least 30 hours a week. They live this, they meet on the weekends, they do their own whiteboard sessions. It's amazing how obsessed they are with this. Of our returned citizens, we've had zero reoffend over the last 10 years. The last mile is in five states today in the United States, 17 classrooms, men, women, and youth. We have returned citizens coming back into San Francisco and Silicon Valley area, and they were getting jobs and earning a much more than marketable wage and thriving. The idea of being able to go through a process of redemption is critically important. People in the general public need to see that process of redemption because it's not necessarily what someone did, it's what they've done since then. I mean, this country is sort of built on second chances. So I grew up with this mentality, like the world is against me. At 11 years old, I was in a foster home. I was walking down the street and one of my good friends got killed right in front of me. That same year I joined a gang and didn't have like no remorse for anybody I hurt. I went to prison because I shot someone that molested my daughter. I was really angry at the world. And the last mile helped me see some potential in me that I didn't see at the time. I just had so much trauma that I needed to unpack and process throughout my childhood that I would just like sweep it under the rug. As time went by and I stayed in the program, I started to find more of myself, more of my identity, more of who I wanted to be. We feel like we're parents to a lot of people in the program, but Jason's particularly special. When Jason got out, it was really emotional because his son was there and he hadn't seen his son in years. Even at that moment, he was shedding that past and looking to the future. And um, it's one of the most rewarding things you'll experience where someone is actually stepping into a new life. What I'm most proud of, aside from who he has become as a person, is how he pays it forward and how he nurtures kids who could have been him, who he was, 
but he has such a genuine caring and spirit, and I love that about him. You can change so many lives. Mentoring, showing them what success can look like if they choose a different path. Like so many youth, when I go talk to them, I tell them I'm an engineer, they're like, oh wow, you don't look like an old engineer. And if they don't see me as an engineer, they don't see themselves as an engineer, and I think that's a big problem. I can come into these young people's life or even some of these adults' life and then show them something different than what, the, what their norm in, in their world is. You know, my time on Earth, did I make more room for people or did I take up space for people? I want to be able to say I made more room. Beverly and Chris are developing a bold solution to one of our biggest problems. Subscribe to Freethink to be the first to see new episodes on more inspiring leaders who are catalysts for change in their communities.